Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, we're going to be running uh, a new deck. It's something I've been working on a bit on uh, the the off-stream time I play Magic. It is a Abzan uh, Green Black White Reanimator deck. So Reanimator, for those of you who are unfamiliar, it's basically a uh, deck where you're looking to bring back creatures from your graveyard and uh, get them into play. So the way we do that, we have a couple options. But the main way is a new card that got printed in Historic Anthologies. Where did you go? Unburial Rites. There we go. Uh, so Unburial Rites is a card for 5 mana. We can return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. But more importantly, and the way we likely cast it more often than not, is for its flashback. So flashback for 4 mana, we can cast this card from the graveyard uh, and then reanimate a creature. So what we do is we try to self-mill the creature we want to reanimate as well as Unburial Rites and then reanimate something big. So generally you want to target like Ulamog, or you can do like Cavalier of Thorns or Kenrith. Kenrith also is another way you can reanimate creatures. Uh, you have Elspeth Conquer's Death and Eldest Reborn that can bring creatures back as well. And then our smaller creatures can be brought back with Lurus. Um, and then we have Eerie Ultimatum, which can basically bring back our entire graveyard to the battlefield. Um, the way we put cards into the graveyard is Stitcher Supplier enters the battlefield or dies. You put three cards into your graveyard. Mire Triton, Glowspore Shaman, and then Ashiok targeting ourselves. Cavalier Thorns is also a way to put cards into our graveyard. So it's a bunch of self-mill, and then you bring it back. Um, and then kind of the cards that put the keep the deck together, you have a couple Fiend Artisans, which can tutor for specific... Um, like hate cards or like effects so you can have knight of autumn to blow stuff up or gain life ravenous chupacabra's removal massacre girl as a board wipe so there and then acolyte of affliction to get something back from your graveyard so there's kind of a, a shell here where you can play around um and then we have a couple elvish rejuvenators this deck tends to be a little bit mana heavy so i want to get up to like five mana fairly quickly um, and then we are in a Yorian shell, so all these ETB effects can be bounced. We also have some Maelstrom Pulse mainboard to deal with troublesome permanents. Um, sideboard wise, so I've been playing this mainly as a best of one deck, so I put together the sideboard, but we'll see if we need to make some more changes. Uh, Agonizing Remorse versus the more controlly matchups, Noxious Grass versus like Winota or Gruul or anything like that. Two more pulses. Post board, we want to have answers to any sort of graveyard removal or like uh, exile effects. Another Knight of Autumn, really flexible card here. In the more like mid rangey, uh, there's like a lot of Jeskai Super Friend style decks. Uh, Questing Beast could come in. Crawl Foragers basically gains you a life for each creature in your graveyard. Um, this is a good card against more aggro decks. And then against the more attrition based matchups, I have both a Vivian and a Vraska here. Uh, Vivian gives you card advantage, can destroy artifact enchantment or creature, and then threatens an, uh, an emblem. And then Vraska creates a steady stream of tokens, also destroys a artifact creature enchantment, and then uh, has an effect that could kind of take your opponent out, putting them at one life. So we're going to try this out. Um, it's kind of here and there. Uh, we're at 97%. We actually dropped the percent just from the deck tech. When I logged in, we were at 98. So we'll give it a shot, see how it goes. I'm going to be brewing a couple different decks and just playing some of the more established historic decks. Uh, until we get the announcement Monday with the banned and restricted list, I'm going to be a little bit more selective, if you may, on uh, what we're playing for standard for now. Just don't want to put the effort in for something to be banned. After the ban and announcement, we'll go back and revisit standard and play some decks there. But I've been having a lot of fun with historic. If you haven't tried it out, I definitely would suggest doing so. Uh, it is a very enjoyable format. Uh, so this hand doesn't actually do anything. Our lands are awkward, and we can't cast Ashiok. So I'm going to mulligan. Um, this hand's fine, and I'll put away... I think I want double green. So I think we just put back the, the tomb there. So this is Winota. So this hand's not great right now. We can trade early with something, but if they go turn two war boss. Okay, so they're just going the elf plan. And that's just drawing nothing but lands also hasn't helped. So 
gonna decline here. I may have to just reanimate this ravenous chupacabra. No blocks here. It's actually not terrible because I can bring back Chupacabra, but we are very close to just getting Winoda next turn. Because if they drop Winoda, they get th up to three attack triggers, and then that could kill us. They hard cast Marauders. We'll go Ravenous Chupacabras, kill the Marauders, and then next turn I can Yorian Blink uh, the Chupacabra, and then kill something else as well. Interesting, they're playing Galley on theirs. Um, I think we just do this. Gone a little bit different, so this is not the stock Umari list. Actually, that's a pretty good follow up afterwards. So it's pretty free attack here. This is kind of why I like Yorian in the shell. The extra 20 cards helps when you're milling yourself, but just being able to recycle these ETB effects is really good. Um, I'm gonna hold this cycle land because if we keep flooding, I wanna be able to dump it. I can Luris and cast the Fiend Artisan. And then that can help me search. Cool. Opponent had a pretty aggressive start, but we were able to get around them. Uh, so this is a Noxious Grass matchup. And then Maelstrom Pulse, probably play the Crawl Forgers. Um, coming out in this matchup, Ashiok's not that good. Massacre Girl's fine. Probably going to cut the Eldest Reborn. They'll have stuff that they can play around. Going to trim an Eerie Ultimatum. I want just the smaller stuff to be able to block. Knight of Autumn's probably also good. Get rid of the Acolyte. Conquer's Death is reasonable. They have big stuff. Cavalier's fine. I'm probably not going to get to a point where Luris is necessarily relevant. So maybe we trim a Luris. I like Cavalier because it's big. Actually, we could probably cut an Ulamog as well. I'm going to win this game more from just an attrition standpoint than necessarily Ulamogging. So like Luris is good when the games go long. This deck, especially on the play, they're going to look to kill us pretty quick. So this hands a lot better. No elf on one bodes well. Oh, they just have, like, awkward mana. Yeah, that's fine. We have Chupacabra. Um, I'm going to decline. So nothing too big in the graveyard. I would have actually liked to draw the Mire Trident. The Death Touch is pretty good. The Deuce. Thalia. And then Goose. So if they have Winota, I want an answer for it. So I think we just hold up the Grasp this turn. If they just attack with Thalia, then that's fine. Interesting as well, they kept Thalia in against us. So I'm 
gonna do this. I'm gonna block here. And then I'm gonna Chupacabra the war boss. They do have an opening with Winota for two attacks. These aren't dealing damage, which is good. So they do have Winota. They get two attacks in. Second Winota. And Angrath. So that's 16 damage. I'm gonna take the damage. And then just Yorian here, kill Winota. It's a little precarious, but I think that's the way we have to try to win this game. I can gain some life. Okay, they just have another Winota. So we're likely dead here. Yep. Blade draw is going to make a difference there, obviously. Um, so maybe we play this on the draw. Cut the Ulamog. Maybe I want... Questing Beast instead of Luris. It's tough because like we want to progress our board, but we also don't want to overextend. Or sorry, that doesn't make sense. I want to be able to play around. Ah, we lost this. <sighs> Shitty moles. That's unfortunate. Multi five, we're likely not going to win this. Our hand's not that well equipped. Something like Meyer Trident would have been nice on too. Yeah, they got the Elf Draw. <sighs> this one's unfortunate. I think we're fine. Like in game one, we showed like there's ways for us to interact with them. That's actually a pretty solid draw. So I can block here. And I have Questing Beast. Hope to dodge Winota this turn. Let's go Mari. We got rights. Um, I could try to dig for Massacre Girl, but I think I rights for Cavalier. It's a big body. And if it dies, then I can bring back this Ravenous Chupacabra. Interesting decision there. Oh, they have a stomp. I think we Chupacabra here. Kill this Bone Crusher Giant.
I can go questing beasts. I think we do this. Kill you. And then next turn is Yorian. So we're taking a hit for four here. There is a question if we... One, two, one, two, three, four. So I actually think here... We fiend artisan. Actually, I should have cavaliered. Try to find a land. Because what I can do is I can... If I hit a land, then I can do this for five. And then go get um, Massacre Girl and then wipe their board. Sick. Took down Winota, which is one of the top decks in the format. I hate the auto reset to bot. Sparky just wants some attention, but we're not here to give him any. And really what we're just trying to do is grind attrition. I might want to go up another Chupacabra. In that game, like at least against creature decks, served really well. That's pretty solid. Mire Trident into Acolyte into Conqueror's Death. Opponents on Luris, so it can be a couple different decks. There's a Luris Burn deck that we played yesterday that's very good. Um, there's a Luris Grixis Breach deck. So it's Luris Burn. Firebrand's actually pretty annoying against Trident. We can get Kenrith going, the life gain's reasonable. This Conqueror's Death isn't really going to have text in this matchup. Shino. So I really need to find a 3-drop. Something like Knight of Autumn. Oh, how about the card that doesn't do anything in the matchup? <laughs> we're going to draw another one, too. We have three of these in our 80-card deck, and they were in the top 10 cards. Get hit for 5. Hopefully they don't have light up the stage. Also not very good here. Game one's probably rough. We need like the foragers and stuff. Because next turn's like Acolyte, get back this Mire trade in, but even then. Actually, it's probably Acolyte, get back the castle. Play Kenrith. Wonder if they go Luris here. Since we drew this, I'm going to draw the, get the Mire trade in. We have a reader. Okay, we got right, so let's get Meyer Trade in back. Lightning strike, yeah, we're dead here. Because I can cast Kenrith, but they likely have enough burn. So in this matchup, uh, Knight of Autumn, Maelstrom Pulse, Crawl Forager. Uh, we can get rid of the. Ulamogs, the Conqueror's Death. Um, probably bring in Questing Beast. Just like lower the curve. Yuri Ultimatum could come out. Um, probably where we want to be. Ashiok's not the best, but it's still better than. Yeah, probably just run like that. Yeah, I think having access to another Chupacabra would probably be good. And really what, we're, what we want to do here is with this hand. Nope. We have a second land. This hand also doesn't do anything. We're probably dead here. Okay. This hand's better at least. So we don't need rights. And we will put away a planes. Problem is we're not really impacting the board till turn three. 
to which point they can have like five to six power out. Meyer Triton would be actually a very good draw for us. Okay, well, slower draw from them. Probably gonna go Knight. Gain four. Because it's likely, like, any burn spell kills it anyway, so I might as well get the immediate value. This can just be, like, a lightning strike or something. Shock. Three. Okay, that's fine. We actually wanted to hit some lines there. Because if I could Kenrith this turn, it'll be good. Get the burn out of their hand. Get to sort of hitting us for seven. A little awkward. Never really drew what we needed that game. The one card I was considering was Charming Prince to help smooth out the draws. Something to also cast. So maybe we go down a Rejuvenator. So I want another Chupacabra. I'll go down a Conqueror's Death. And then play two Charming Prince. So Charming Prince is cool because if you have it with Yorian, you can get a loop where basically every turn cycle your creatures alternate coming into play. Um, so it's another way to abuse the ETB effects. Maybe I want something like Othakaya in the sideboard. Um, deals damage, can be blink with Yorian, gains you life as well, and can be a little bit more of a versatile removal spell. Opponents on Amari, his hand's probably good between massacre girl maelstrom paul selfish rejuvenator obviously not being able to supply her on one's a little awkward but i'm gonna give it a shot and i kind of built this as a mid-rangey in the sense like has game against most decks But I think you can kind of tailor it if you want it to be better against control or against aggro. Um, just by like the spells. You can play like any of the creatures at ETB and discard. That might be something to explore. Like Yarx Fenlurker or something like that. So Masker Girl is good there. We're hitting our land drops, so I think it's just a matter of protecting ourselves. Winota, of course. So we probably lost this one. Turn three Winota is very difficult to deal with. Especially with the Angraths here. They're hitting us for eight. And like I can pulse this, but we're we're dead. I have to take two points. I pulse this. So grasps, forger, pulse, knight in. Cutting, Eerie, these two. Um, keeping Massacre Girl, Chupacabra, Pulse, get rid of Ashiok, get rid of Alluris. Now that we cut a bit of the top end, so cut Eerie Ultimatum, cut Eldest Reborn. Probably a Kenrith. Just don't see us using Kenrith that often in this matchup. Just lowering the curve, trying to be more interactive. And like you're gonna lose these games against Winota sometimes, they're just gonna flip. If you don't have like a clean removal spell on two. 
or on like that game three, right? Like if we would have untapped, we would have been a little bit further ahead. What's with these hands? Not the best, but put away the rights. We got a lot of removal here. Tad frustrating. I'm a mulliganing with this deck. Because, like, we're not even being super greedy with reanimation. It's mostly just value add. So, like, five drops. We have a decent curve. Okay, opponent mulligan quite a bit. So, it might work in our favor. I want to find lands here. Um... I think we do this like i want to guarantee the land we're a ways away from fiend artisan and Donto. Donto is actually really annoying like based on what our hand is phoenix of ash They usually don't play this. So now I'm stuck in a predicament where I can pulse this, but if they have Winota, I need to hold up removal. Just not hitting the line there is not good. So we're gonna take a chance. Gonna go for the life gain play here. Mulliganing and not hitting lands is a little awful. There we go. Fixing that so we can see the rating. Go hack those. Gonna make them work for it. They're taking a lot of damage here. So I do want something with one. So I'm gonna go Mire Trade in here. Gains me two life, lets me hold up this grasp. I'm really just trying to find a land for this Massacre Girl. Don't have anything great to reanimate right now anyways. Opponents also done 10 damage to themselves this game. They go Annex here. Wonder if they attack in with a Danto. They don't. Untap land. Thank you. So this should wipe out Annex and all the tokens as well because there's all the triggers on the stack. I can also use Yorian to reset it. and then annex dies and there's all these triggers they can bring back um, the phoenix of ash if we have pulse for it can also play yorian if needed can block i can pulse this They can't pump, so they're only hitting us for three this turn. And I have grasp for any of their like white things. Um, that's actually probably better. Because this lets me do this, kill the Phoenix. I 
think this was a multi five too. Yeah, they're dead if they don't have another spell. Noxious Grasp. Okay, they have a Danto. So they can block with the Danto, but they can't um, do that. This has Menace, so it'll deal four. They can't do that. Probably run it back. So I want Vivian. Vivian can't target. We're not getting a six mana that often. I think we just run it back like that. It's Phoenix of Ash. Something definitely to consider. Three lands, some graveyard enablers, and a chupacabra. It's what I want. You know what? Good enough. The majority of the threats they have that I care about are going to be um, white. So I think this turn I go Fiend Art is in. And then I hold up the Noxious Grasp. This is basically going to read gain three life, deal four to your opponent. Obviously you prefer this later in the game. But at this point, beggars can't be choosers. Bone pressure. That's interesting. Like, I guess it forces through some damage, but kind of slows down their game plan. So we're taking a chance here. They could have Winota. Do I want the land? Probably. So if we can dodge Winota one turn is all we need. Just play this out. That's all I want. I'm going to take the hit this turn, obviously, unless they drop Winota. Because I want this three power to block this Bone Crusher. Okay, so no Winota. Phoenix of Ash. Hmm. This is interesting. So we're going to do this, then I'm going to Chupacabra, take down the Phoenix of Ash. We somewhat have to gamble this game. Them being on the play means we have to be a little bit more defensive. The graveyard also doesn't have anything to bring this back for a while. I'm going to take the three points here because I want to be able to blink it. Again, I feel like if they had Winota, they would have played it like real quick. Okay, Umari. Valley is a little awkward because it makes these cost more. I'm just gonna questing beast here. Pass the turn. Block likely. Anumari. Yorian. Yeah, because I can't take seven. It's too much damage. Maybe Annex 
as well. Okay, they're going wide. I haven't hit the massacre girl. Pulse also doesn't really do much here. Probably take Annex off the battlefield or Umari. Might be a Thalia actually. No, I think we gotta do Umari. I have the pulse to clean up stuff. This might be like an alpha strike on their part. I do like the inclusion of Annex out of the side, just as like board wipe insurance. So we have to dodge now both uh, Angras Marauder and Winota. Draw land, I can get back Cavalier, or if the Thalia dies. Okay, so they didn't do that. I can pulse this. Okay, I think we just wait. I'm going to throw a Noxious Grasp on Thalia here. don't know if the opponent realizes these are legendary. Or just to get another token. That. This lets me pulse and then hold up Noxious Grasp as well. I can be attacking, but until Bone Crusher comes off, that's actually scary. Two doesn't work for them. So here I need to do this. Plays worse against like Winota. cemetery here build the yard some more what I'd really like is charming prince so I can bring back fiend artisan and then fiend artisan can help me get massacre girl so I think that's the line we can block this in the sky they can do some pumps which is fine can blow up the land. Um, let's do this. Likely dead to Winota anyway, so let's put on a clock. Then I can get Crawl Forager. 
can get Kenrith. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So six plus gain five life from Kenrith. Oh, opponent wants to pump here. Sir, this has reach. I think we get Kenrith because I can gain some life. Conquer's death is actually very good. So Conquer's death, this. Still have Charming Prince in the deck, right? Yeah. Sack Elvish Rejuvenator. Oh, you know what? I should have attacked first. Missed that. So we missed four points of damage. Because then I can exile the Bone Crusher as well. And then you basically get the loop where every turn you get to play again. Sick. So I actually bet Winota twice, lost the mono red. Um, so that's pretty much the deck. I'm going to wrap this one up. Gone for about 45 minutes. Usually like to get three-ish matches in to demo the deck. Um, if you like this deck, if you like to see any other decks, do let me know on my YouTube channel. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Stay safe and have fun playing Magic. Good luck for anyone else who's playing in the Open tomorrow. Have a great one.